the van and made it to Scotland now. We didn't manage to film everything else that we did in the van because it was just chaos when we were trying to get away. It was the battery and electrics stopped working so Brockham spent a day trying to sort that out um, and it was just like I don't know we were quite disorganized leaving so we I didn't manage to film anything sadly but um, we are going to do a little van tour um, hopefully in the next week. But today I am on my own. Rohan's gone for a winter skills course in the Gorms mountains. So I spent yesterday on my own and today. Yesterday me and Floss went for a 13 mile walk around uh, something called the Chamberlain Gap. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> um, which was really nice. And so today we're both a bit worn out because we didn't do a lot of walking before coming away in the van. So. So we've just done a little walk around a small loch that I've just come to after dropping Brochan off at the ski place for his winter course. Um, and it's really, really beautiful here. It's an RSPB site and it's just a really old, old pines and Scots pine, I think they are. And the woods are just full of lichens and heather and it's just really, really beautiful. So we've stopped here and gone for a walk and now I'm just going to tidy up the van a bit because it's a bit of chaos. <laughs> um, I think that's quite normal when you're in a van, I don't know, unless you're uber tidy, but we're not. So it gets chaotic very quickly in such a small space. So I'm going to make a cup of coffee and then tidy up the van. Now I'm going to do some photo editing and then pick up Rohan later on.
morning. Brahan is back with me today. He's finished his winter skills course. Do you want to say a bit about that? Yes. So it was uh, just south of Aviemore. Yeah, on the on the first day it was quite well, a really nice day going up and uh, we were basically taught how to navigate properly using a map and compass, um, how to prepare for uh, you know, a day out in the mountains, everything you need to pack, uh, all the multiple gloves you need, like I've experienced. I went through two gloves, I probably could have went through about five pairs. Um, yeah, so we, uh, yeah, she based, uh, the instructor, she taught us how to use an ice axe and crampons properly, uh, which are, well, are extremely useful and you can't really do much mountaineering without them, well, safely anyway. Um, she, she taught us how to build snow sh emergency snow shelters, which is pretty cool, and even an extreme one, which was if there's no sort of kind of little hillside to dig your shelter into, you'd literally just dig yourself a little coffin in the snow and then try and create these kind of plinths from the snow and you just basically lay them across the top and just lay in it. Um, you didn't like what, like prep, you didn't need to get too much did you, like you rented the... the oh yeah, so um, yeah, she, uh, all, all I had to do was bring, you know, warm clothes, uh, I hired B2 rated boots. Uh, yeah, I think they were only like ten pound a day. Uh, we they gave us a helmet, ice axe, and crampons. And if you didn't have a map, uh, a compass, sorry, they'd lend you their compasses as well. Um, so yeah, all you had to do is bring your pack lunch, your bag, uh, warm stuff, and that was it really. And they'll supply everything else. Uh, so I, f I feel a lot more confident, and also I think. I have a newfound respect as well because I think I was probably a bit naive before and thinking that you can just trundle up the, the snowy mountains. <laughs> but uh, Or stomp through the snow to find a, yeah. a ravine as he did in Switzerland once. Yeah, yes. um, <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was a really, really amazing experience and I would recommend it to anyone with um, any sort of love for the snow. So last night we parked in a car park up the mountain near the Avonmore ski resort um, and it was so so windy it was it kept me awake most of the night I didn't get a lot of sleep and I thought that the van was going to be blown over <laughs> while Brockham was snoring away with not a leg care in the world <laughs> um, but the van has stayed actually really warm I know I'm in a puff coat this morning but um, last night we, when we've got the diesel heater on at night it's actually really really cozy um, even a bit too hot for me to actually at times. Um, and we have blankets up at the windows. So yeah, it's really good that it's staying warm, even in like a blizzard. It's actually cozy, which is nice. Mm. This morning we've woken up to snow, which is quite exciting. Um, so we're planning on doing a walk over some mountains, maybe not like ridges like you've gone on, because we don't have ice axe and crampons <coughs> at the moment. So. So that's the plan for today. We're just going to have breakfast, finalise the route we're going to take, and, and then we'll take you along with us. just walking through this woodland before coming onto the mountain and there's these huge old Scots pines. They're quite incredible. Covered in lichen, I don't know how old they are. This must be part of the Caledonian forest, I guess. Just to show you the scale of the trees. We 
we've just come up this valley here and now we're going up those hills into the snow just come to this little body the right van Oh! We've just done the big climb up to the. We're nearly at the car now. Up there. Um, I was a bit terrified because it was really steep and I'm really scared of heights. So it was a bit scary for me, but I think really tame for Brockham. Having done his mountaineering course. <laughs> but the views from up here with the sun are so pretty at the moment. Such a beautiful day. cold up here so I might not get out and film much more because my hands are freezing and I can't do it with gloves on. Let's see. We've just stopped down a little sheltered bit to have something to eat. Um, it's really cold up here so I don't think we're gonna have tea which we were gonna have. Um, and it's just started snowing. I'm quite a nervous hiker. I get nervous about the weather and everything. I always think there's going to be thunderstorms and things like that, so... Um, we've still got a little way to go. There's no one on this bit, which is really nice, so we're on our own. And then hopefully we're going to find a path down, if it's actually on the ground. Sometimes with OS maps they have a path and then it doesn't actually exist on the ground, it could be quite difficult, but... Hopefully we'll be alright. <laughs> As we descended from the mountain we came into dense forestry. I always feel a bit weird in forestry, like it's quite oppressive. After walking through the thick woods for a while, we came out into open land where the trees had all been felled. I know that this landscape is a necessity as we all use wood, we've clad a whole van in wood, but it still feels like such a desolate landscape and such a contrast to the ancient Scots pine woods that we had entered at the start of the walk where all the trees are covered in lichens and the floor is springy with mosses and undergrowth. It feels like a land that's scarred from years of growing trees and cutting them down, and machines tearing up the ground. I know these woods are needed, but it could be more sensitive to the environment. In Brockhan's experience working as a tree searcher in forestry in the UK, it is an aggressive business that has little care for trees, wildlife or the land. It takes time to be more conscious, checking for nests and wildlife. This costs money, and in a society where money and time is valued over the earth, what chance is there of slowing down? 